Hello again, for those of you who are um, just joining us, this is a TechSoup host webinar. And today our webinar topic is unlock the potential of .org for your organization growth and success. I am very interested in hearing this topic because I wanna know, is it important? So you're gonna learn that today. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm your webinar um, host today. And I'm also the webinar producer here at TechSoup. If it's your first time, let me show you how you can engage today. Of course, you already know you are mute, so um, feel free to type your questions in the Q&A. We have lots of team members to answer your questions. You can feel free to type them in the chat as well. We're going to email you the video replay within a couple of days, probably tomorrow, because we're just fast like that. So if you learned something cool today, which I think you will, go ahead and share it on your social media. And when you share it, hashtag us at TechSoup. If you need the closed caption, go ahead and hit that CC button at the bottom of your screen and you'll be able to use a closed caption. And I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our guest speaker today. Um, this is Tony. He has over 25 years experience in marketing and product management. Tony is the senior director of product management, senior director of product marketing at Public Interest Registry. I wanna get that um, right. He's responsible for the .org and the family of domains to meet the needs of mission-driven organizations and helping the .org community maximize their impact on the communities they serve. So Tony, welcome and thank you for being here. I'm gonna turn this over to you. Thank you. Okay, um, so I was gonna share my screen, Aretha. Thank you. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Connor, Director of Product Marketing at Public Interest Registry. Um, my role is to make sure that the .org domain is meeting the needs of the community. So I'd just like to say thank you to TechSoup for this opportunity to speak to you all. Uh, and please ask questions, um, <clears throat> and and comments would be, be even better, actually, sharing some of your experiences with .org and what you do with your websites. Um, uh, I'm joined by uh, Kendall Rowe, our Director of Marketing, so if there's any hard questions on marketing, um, Kendall's going to answer those as well. Uh, but more importantly, what we want to do, um, what we want you to get from this presentation is why .org is the um, domain of choice for nonprofits and mission-driven organizations and go through some options on how you can use .org <clears throat> either for your main website or for some other campaigns or, or other initiatives as, as well as your main web websites as, as well. Yeah. All right, so setting up your online presence is obviously really important. Um, and the domain name, considering it's only a few characters, uh, is one of the most important parts of your branding. So even if you're just starting up and you're just getting some supporters on social media, you should actually think about what you want your website to be down the road, plan for success. Um, you have some options. You don't have to build a website initially, but if you're going to be successful, you're going to need a website. Um, the thing about .org is it signals your purpose and your mission to your organization. Um, and it gives you legitimacy. Um, a lot of big organizations are on .org. And if you're part of that community, there's a knock-on effect in terms of legitimacy uh, and trust, which is one of the most important things um, that .org actually gives people. Um, it's a silly little example, but my neighbors were very worried about um, <coughs> speeding on our road. So they contacted the police and the local authorities, uh, but they also got fairwaydrive.org. They didn't set up the website initially, but after talking to the authorities and things, they did a local campaign, they had to put signs out, fairwaydrive.org had all the information on the options uh, in terms of calming the traffic. Um, and, you know, it was a great example of planning ahead um, setting up your online presence and actually having a resource there, not just for the immediate neighbors, but a lot of other people in, in uh, streets in our neighborhood are now looking at 
uh, traffic calming as well. So it's a it's a nice little example of planning ahead uh, for success. Why.org? Um, there are millions, as I said, established brands on .org, and that legitimacy does rub off uh, on small, medium, and large organizations as well. At the moment, there are 10.8 million domains on .org, um, and it's one of the original domains. So uh, 1984, uh, .com, .org, .net, .gov, and .edu were launched. <clears throat> And the first .org was in 1985, MITRE.org. So that's almost 40 years ago. Everyone assumes the internet is new, but it's been around for 40 years. Um, and it, .org is trusted. Um, we do a brand survey every year um, for domain uh, customers in general, but specifically nonprofits as well, as well. And .org is consistently the highest score in terms of brand trust. Um, and mo most importantly, visitors. It's not just the people who set up websites on .org, it's the people that come to your uh, website. Um, we did some research probably three years ago, and 77% of visitors to websites trusted.org, the next one was .com at 60 something. So .org naturally gives trust to what you're doing and your website as well. Yeah. And don't be scared to ask any questions. Um, <clears throat> expanding your reach. So um, I pounded on about legitimacy um, and it's not just visitors, it's all your stakeholders. So it's donors, supporters, brand organizations, um, other stakeholders, uh, everyone that either works with your organization to make it a success or people you wanna reach out to, to make your organization a success. Um, it creates confidence um, and does attract volunteers, uh, activists, and obviously donations. Um, websites are a key part of fundraising uh, and .org can really supplement that as well. Uh, and the other thing I would say, um, the .org community is actually a community. Uh, and we, as the owners of .org, we do a number of things on social, uh, but we also have the .org Impact Awards every year. Uh, we recognize the .orgs that are making a difference in their community. Um, you, don't, um, you don't need, you, you've got to be using .org for at least a year. So it's not a play to get people to uh, get a .org. It's really highlighting the community and who is successful. Recognizable .orgs. <clears throat> uh, the obvious thing in the middle there, Habitat for Humanity. Habitat.org is a fantastic branding um, uh, piece of their branding. Um, it's their name, it's short, you're able to remember it, and people know that ha Habitat.org is the place to go to volunteer. Um, World Wildlife Fund. Their main website is worldwildlife.org, but WWF actually redirects their main site, which is a lot easier uh, in terms of social and people remembering it as well. Uh, United Nations, uh, not a lot of people know this. There is actually a domain called .int that was actually introduced specifically for organizations like, um, <laughs> like the UN. Uh, but the UN actually decided to go with .org. They just felt it was more related to their community. Um, Red Cross, uh, that's probably the biggest in terms of usage of .org and immediately recognizable. And then Days for Girls International. <laughs> Days for Girls addresses period poverty around the world. Um, and they actually have a whole army of people making uh, reusable pads. Uh, and when COVID happened, they actually pivoted and started making masks, which was a great example of using current um, 
capabilities, but also um, flagging that and highlighting it on their website as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there's a couple of questions there. Uh, Joe, what's the website of choice to use of nonprofit organization? Um, I think .org is the obvious piece, um, partly because it was designed for nonprofits, but the actual community itself is full of nonprofits. So if you join .org, you're actually there with other nonprofits, um, highlighting their good work, but also your good work as well. Uh, and Mr. Anonymous, uh, yes, we did start at One Eastern um, as well. Um, okay. So the obvious question is, I've already got a website. Why should I worry about .org? Uh, well, first of all, if you're a nonprofit or a mission-driven organization, you should be on .org anyway for your main site. Uh, but also a new .org domain can be used for so many things, specific marketing campaigns. So if there's something in the news that you want to highlight and uh, fundraise off, uh, you can use a .org domain specifically for that. Uh, fundraising initiatives are obvious things that um, uh, you can use .org for as well. Uh, and advocacy efforts. A lot of nonprofits, you've got the 501c3 piece that's doing their good work, but they also um, engage with governments and other associations in terms of advocating for the work um, they do. Um, impact statements. If you, you're applying for grants, it's actually quite useful to have a specific page or website with your impact statement on. That means you can highlight what you need in terms of that grant application um, and obviously have links to your main site, but you're highlighting the specific things you wanna, wanna do. And then volunteer management. Some organizations, it's very complicated. You're getting your volunteers excited and moving but also it's not always appropriate to have that next to your fundraising uh, opportunities as well. So all these things can be used. Uh, John's got a question there. How should an organization select their domain name? <laughs> I think it comes down to two things, uh, your mission and what you want to impact uh, and your branding. Um, Branding is normally thought of a nonprofit um, in nonprofit context, but it's it's just as true for um, all sort of organization. Um, if you can get a very simple um, domain like habitat.org, then you can relate it to your brand, but then also it's a lot easier to actually use um, to use both online and even offline. My example of fairwaydrive.org. Uh, there's lots of signs on our road with the website. Um, so having a short uh, domain related to your brand is key, I think. All right, so I wanna do all these things. What are my choices? Um, the obvious thing is to put a page on your existing site and that's absolutely fine. Um, it um, preserves your search engine ranking. Um, uh, when visitors go to that page, they can also look at the other things you're doing uh, and it preserves that brand. Um, the, the look and feel of the website is consistent, uh, that sort of thing. Unfortunately, a very long page name can actually be um, a bit of a uh, confusion on social and particularly uh, in the offline world. Uh, it's very hard to put really long URLs on posters. Um, but also, if you want a specific call to action for a visitor, you want to focus on that. And sometimes having a page on your website, a uh, main website, can be distracted, distracting as well. Um, so, Joe, you have a question, uh, and Megan's going to answer it. That's probably better than me doing that. One second. Yep. Um, so, page on existing website, perfectly fine. Microsite. Microsite typically is one to three pages and focuses on a very specific thing, whether it be a campaign or initiative. Um, I've used a natural disaster as an example here, which is a bit unfortunate because we always use uh, natural disasters. But 
it's a good example of when you want to move quickly uh, and you want to get something out very quickly and there are very specific things you want people to do normally with fundraising um, but it can be other things as well um, because you control it you you have two options you can get a new.org domain or you can do a subdomain off your current one so the example here was disaster.example.org. Um, you've got your branding uh, in the domain there, although search engines do actually view it as a new site, so you're not going to get the advantage of search engine rankings. Uh, and that's true for a new domain as well. But it comes down to what your objectives are. If you need to move quickly, uh, search engines aren't always the thing to do. Sometimes it's social, sometimes it's very specific things as well. Um, and then the third um, option is to redirect. Uh, and this applies when you start up or uh, when you're doing something specific for a campaign. If you get examplesaster.org, you can redirect that to the page on your website. Uh, so you get all the advantages of a very short domain, um, but it does preserve some of the advantages of your website, or it can go to the microsite or even it can go to your social pages. Um, the branding research we do uh, highlighted that 67, 67% of nonprofits nowadays actually start on social media. Um, so if you get your domain name, you can actually forward that to your social media accounts, set it up um, a website or a way of talking to supporters uh, very quickly. Just checking the questions. Um, PIR, the people behind .org. Uh, we have actually operated .org for 20 years, um, started in 2003, uh, so it was our 20th birthday. Um, and .org is the cleanest domain space in the industry. Uh, and a lot of that is actually the users of .org. The organizations that use .org are all doing good in the world. And that has a knock-on effect of, of the namespace itself. Uh, but we actually do a lot of things to, to keep uh, .org clean. So we focus on quality. We don't do big discounts um, and get lots of domains that aren't going to get used. Um, there are specific um, things we do that um, are really quite important. When you operate a domain name globally, um, it has to work the same in every single country, which means you have to engage governments, tech companies, nonprofits, uh, and, and other groups as well. Um, and to, if we get a complaint about a website, it's actually really quite hard to navigate that in terms of uh, doing action. However, PIR has zero tolerance, for instance, for CSAM, child sexual abuse material. Um, and we have consciously taken the decision to take action when we get those sort of complaints uh, and sort it out later. Uh, we also work with some trusted notifiers as well. So the Red Cross, for instance, um, whenever there's a natural disaster, there are a lot of domains that are not set up by the Red Cross, but include the words red and cross. So what we've done is set up an uh, arrangement with them. They'll notify us when it's a domain they haven't set up, and then we'll suspend it as soon as, as, soon as practical. Um, and then finally, <clears throat> we are actually a nonprofit. We're owned by the Internet Society. Uh, the Internet Society is a nonprofit that's dedicated to keeping the internet free, open, and accessible to all. So what they do is, in, depending on the country, invest in infrastructure, for instance, or um, they do a lot of advocacy in terms of privacy laws, that sort of thing. Um, and I would uh, suggest if you go to internetsociety.org, they do some great work as well. Okay. How to register your domain. Um, <clears throat> there's a link uh, in the slides which you, you can click on when it comes. Uh, simply log into your TechSoup account, go to that link and you can search for your domain name. Um, 
Now, it's great getting a domain name, but you need to work out what your website's going to look like. Um, we PIR have something called the .org Learning Center, but also TechSoup have a great little article on how to build a website in six key steps. And I would recommend going there because it focuses you on what you want to say, what you want to include. Uh, Joe, uh, you've got your website through Wix.com. Um, if you acquire .org from someone else, TechSoup, then you can uh, transfer, you can do a couple of things. You can set up the domain name system to point your .org to where your website is hosted, or you can use TechSoup services for hosting and other things as well. Um, and that's one of the great things, I think, about um, PIR and TechSoup. We're both invested in trust. Um, so the services that TechSoup offered are high quality and trustworthy. And as I said, .org, um, we use trust in every single uh, sentence um, when we put out things as well. Okay. That's all I wanted to go through, actually. Uh, are there any other questions? Thank you, Joe, for your activity. Um, and thank you, Kendall, for internetsociety.org. Um, let me ask uh, Kendall or any of the other panelists, is there anything you wanted to mention that I missed? No, I think we're good. Okay, that's great. So thank you very much. Um, we are active on social media. Uh, and if you ping us, uh, Kendall and her team will respond. Um, and we do believe in amplifying uh, the .org community, as I said. We have the .org Impact Awards, and we do feature .orgs on our main website um, as well. Uh, and Lakeisha, yes, the slides will be sent out tomorrow, I think, every Thursday. Well, Tony, this was great. I mean, I learned a lot and, and we don't have to do the whole hour for us to get the information <laughs> because you hit every nail on it. I was even writing notes and I love the examples that you gave throughout the presentation. So getting a lot of thank yous in the chat and uh, from John, the information, and it was also education. You made a lot of educational points. So I wanna thank you and your team members for being here. And then um, Megan and Corey from TechSoup for being um, in the chat, I want to put the link one more time, how you can get access to your dot, uh, org through TechSoup. Um, somebody will put that in the chat and then we'll close this out. Let Tony, if you have any um, final words. Ah, here's everybody. Uh, this is the whole team that was behind the scenes answering your questions. Wave everybody. <laughs> so Tony, I want to give you final words. And again, please come back soon. We're so glad that um, you guys became a part of TechSoup. Uh, well, thank you for the opportunity. As I said, one of the one of the things we don't do enough is talk to the .org community or the potential .org community. So I do appreciate it. Awesome. Have a great day, everybody.